Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome. Today, this is episode seven of my uh, preparing for ultramarathons vlog. Now, if you haven't seen my other videos, this is where I go out on my long runs on a Sunday uh, and take you guys along and talk about various things that a relative newbie might want to consider when doing an ultramarathon for like the first time, perhaps, or if you're just training up for one. Um, the ones I'm doing are mountainous, so I've got three Snowden. Ben Nevis and Scarfell Pike, they're all quite close together in terms of when I'm doing them. Uh, they start in about two months time. Now, like I said, I've been doing long runs on Sunday when I've been at home, but I'm on a bit of an away day. Actually, I'm on holiday, um, but that doesn't mean I can't get out and get something done. No way. Uh, I've come um, to South Wales and South Wales has, you know, quite a few hills in it, but I haven't just stopped there. I haven't just gone up the first Brecon Beacon I could find. I've come out to Worm Point, yeah, uh, impressively named, but it is spectacular. It's like an outcrop in the sea and it's got Devil's Bridge. I don't know if you can see that. We're gonna head over to it in a minute and have a look. It's a naturally formed bridge formation, sort of over, over water, uh, and you sort of have to go across it to get to Worm Point. It's a bit of a twitchy bomb moment, but we're gonna crack on and have a look at it, see what we can see uh, once I get down this rather treacherous path. When I uh, looked on the map from above, two things you don't really get a, a great feel for, how far it is from where you park your car to where you're going, and how high everything is. I'm not sure. That sign is from yesterday. <laughs> tide looks pretty down to me. Right, okay. So I now need to descend to get onto this causeway and get over there. And in fact, I can see Devil's Bridge from here already. You can see through it, that's quite cool. Right. Look at these ponies, hill ponies. How cool is that? In order to get to the bit I'm trying to get to, I've got to I've got to go over this sort of causeway. Now this causeway floods. Um, it floods, <laughs> it floods. The tide comes in and goes over it. So I just double checked on my phone the tide times. And that's really important because um, you get a finite amount of time out there before things get a little bit sketchy. I absolutely do not want to be calling the RNLI to come and get me. No way, Jose. Okay, I had anticipated how technical this bit was. Again, Google Maps, thank you. All right, so in theory, the tide is still going out. Uh, and this is all exposed already. So I've got maybe three hours before I would need to worry. Now I don't know if there's a designated path across this causeway or if it's just get across by any means necessary, which is kind of what I'm doing. But I can't take me off the ground for very long at all <laughs> because it's, oh my God, it's just loose rocks <laughs> as you would expect from the coastal bit. Right. Okay, so I had not um, given this part of the route that much consideration. I thought I'd just scurry across nice flat, flat terrain. <laughs> so yeah, if you're ever going to come and do Worm Point, um, just factor in sort of uh, half an hour of doing this. I can't run it. I'll die uh, and I would not fancy trying to get back across this with the uh, tide lapping at my feet either and then I get to big sort of wet bits like this that I can't quite figure out mm, nearly there though okay well we're pretty much going up straight away it's like shit's on my running again <laughs> I must say it was very exposed up here I know it's a safe little 
walk because lots of tourists do it every day but when you're out here on your own <laughs> but every day is an adventure and I'll have regret not coming here if I hadn't come and as nervous as it sometimes makes me feel certainly when going up hills like this uh, ultimately the experience is what's worth it okay so that's where we're going there's Devil's Bridge look you can see straight through into the sea and there's Worm Point on the end hopefully we can conquer all that in the coming minutes <laughs> well I'll say hour in the coming hour like I say twitchy bum want to get there take my picture and get back I get asked all the time why don't you just stay in bed why don't you just relax why don't you just chill out why do you go to all this effort of running and exercise why bother so I can do things like this okay running facilitates and enables this kind of adventure you don't have to book on an event you don't have to go like anywhere mega special this is just literally a little bit of coast off South Wales do your research plan your route tell, tell people where you're going and then go okay that bit really treacherous like angled rock quite deep gullies one side's got a cliff into the sea and the other side's all of that but that's the main lump done uh, now I need to do sort of the second hump uh, but first we get to go have a little look here at Devil's Bridge Devil's Bridge here. Uh, it's quite thin at that end. <laughs> you do feel a li little bit exposed. Uh, it's turning out to be more of an adventure than I thought. <laughs> so having conquered Devil's Bridge, we're now heading onwards to Worm Point. I must admit this, this has been a lot more challenging than I had planned it to be. <laughs> I, I'd imagine just running down this in about half an hour uh, and being part of this excursion is to test well not just footwear I think that's that's a massive sweeping understatement but just your body's capability of dealing with quite steep uphill and quite steep downhill because we're going to be doing both of those whilst I certainly am in my ultras so uh, just being able to plod down things without too much bother just test your knees, test your ankles, just get them a little bit ready for what's to come. Learn a few techniques of descent, like turning sideways when you need to. Uh, some points you need to put the brakes on, some points you don't. Some points you can just let go and enjoy the run. Right, I need to get over a causeway now, this bloody thing, so I've got to be careful. <laughs> Do, every, do something every day that scares you, right? Well, this should, this one should last a week at least. <laughs> and I was worried when I started this that this would be overrun with tourists. Little did I know how bullshit that was. There's going to be another thing to cross here, isn't there? And the finish line is right there. It doesn't look too bad actually. It doesn't look too bad. Whew. Okay. I wonder how many people have come this way over the years. 
I do think that sometimes about places I've been. I mean, thousands of people over thousands of generations have stood on these rocks. nearly at the very tip now. Very anxious to get back. I don't know why. I don't like this whole against the clock thing. <laughs> Just kind of what I do all the time. Everywhere. When I come on my adventures. It's amazing here though. If you've got a bit of a stomach for heights and you don't mind scrambling over rocks very slowly then this is for you. now getting a bit nervous okay so i've made it to the top as you can see but the weather's picking up and i've got to get back so i'm going to double time it back without too much filming now So, worm point, taking the Devil's Bridge. Um, initial impressions, uh, brilliant. Um, gets the adrenaline running a little bit at times. A few things to consider though, you do achieve some pretty decent heights over there and there is some climbs. Um, literally hands and feet scramble type things. Nothing complicated really, but in that context of on the side of a cliff, and the wind's howling and it's a big drop to the ocean just consider that before you bring kids out here or a dog or something um, the causeway crossing here is it's just tedious like lots of little rock pools to avoid big sort of rocks like this to sort of navigate through and there's another one of these sort of causeways at the halfway point so and that's probably more technical than this one um, the views are spectacular, uh, really, really worth all of that effort. So I definitely recommend it, but the, obviously the biggest thing to consider is the tide times and the weather. You must check those out before you head out. I had, I had about a two hour window of low tide and good weather to do this. That's why I got up super early to come here to make the trip to Worm Point. I had to see Devil's Bridge. I had to. Okay, so that was episode seven of uh, Training for Ultra Marathons. Lots and lots of technical work today to get out to Worm Point. <laughs> uh, 
more than I imagined there would be. I didn't ima imagine I'd be in the position where I'd have to put the camera away, which I rarely do, uh, for fear of falling off something. So, yeah, uh, yeah, it's just been one of those, one of those classic uh, underestimation. That is a, it's fun, but I felt very vulnerable. <laughs> felt very vulnerable anyway right give the channel uh, a subscribe before you go and I will see you guys in my next video uh, sorry about the wind and all that <laughs> all right take care see you soon Mat out.